You named him? Mom named him a long time ago. Uh, Journey. Guys, watch out, Journey's coming out. Well, I can go in there. Alright, tea time. I can go oh, in there. So cool. Come on. Come on. So Journey is not trained to the electric wire, so she went through it once. This might not work. Jeremiah's trying to raise it up, so maybe she won't so easily just go over it. I got out how to pig to get pregnant, Dad. How do pigs get pregnant, Dad? brother Josh stopped by earlier and um, they set to work on the pavilion now some of you might be thinking wait a second we're still waiting to see the window greenhouse which um, I'm kind of excited to tell you but also like uh, you gotta wait till this weekend we're gonna premiere it this weekend the window greenhouse itself is done uh, Maya's working on some of the details and the inside stuff now so you guys are gonna get to see that this weekend we're not going to tease you with this project we're gonna show you the progress as it goes along this is the sitting pavilion that we have been uh, planning on putting here in the garden basically it's gonna have like a step that leads up to a platform it'll have a roof and this is where we will put a table and chairs just have a social area which I'm very excited about. Now some topics that have come up when we have talked about this, as well as the window greenhouse, people have said, well, what about the shade that it's going to cast? And this is going to cast a shadow in the garden. However, that's actually not necessarily a bad thing here. It's really hot in the summer and some plants don't mind a little bit of shade for part of the day as long as they're still getting enough sun to grow. So I'll just have to keep that in mind as I plant where it's more likely to get a little bit of a shadow. I'll probably, w I'm going to use that space to grow some things that will appreciate that break in the heat in the hot summer afternoons. This has been our plan uh, from the very beginning of laying this garden out. That's why it had this big open space right in the middle. We wanted to put a pavilion to be able to sit in the middle of the garden and uh, our plan was always a three-year plan it was going to take three years to build our garden this is the third season that we have been working on this big garden and it looks like we're going to pretty much uh, finish the structure of this vision this year now the perennial garden is going to take a little longer to establish the plants in it we're, we're going to start on that this year and probably do more through the fall planting bulbs and stuff but the structure itself will be in place this year and i am so thrilled to see it come together our little transplants are doing well that we put in here yesterday my dad gave maya a whole bunch of rough cut cypress that he's had for a while in storage and uh, Maya is planting that down right now and that is going uh, to be part of the window greenhouse so I'm so excited to show this to you guys it's gonna be really cool I don't think I can really put into words how exciting it is for me I mean, I just keep looking back at the garden and seeing a pavilion coming up in the middle. I don't know how long it's going to take them to put that up entirely. Josh does construction, and uh, sometimes you probably have seen us wearing shirts that say uh, Sowards Contracting, and that's his company. And so uh, he came to kind of frame it and square it just to get Maya on the right track, and then there are parts of it that Maya can do by himself, but we wanted to make sure that it was structurally sound uh, before you know, investing in the materials to put it up, which we'll makes sure it's gonna last. But looking over there at that, I don't know, it's just that one change, it's just like, I don't know, it just completely changes the garden. Y'all see what I'm talking about? That feels like such a big deal. <laughs> Amanda, we have a couple more days with her. She's got some seeds from inside. We're gonna start a few seeds basil seedlings coming up. 
Multiple kinds in here are popping up through the soil. That's exciting. And then nasturtiums too. The Alaska Red Shades nasturtium are starting to come out. Now those are the variegated ones that I'm very excited about. I do love variegated plants. Got lots of baby okras coming up back here. Now I made an observation that the seedlings that are in the soil mix that I try to mix from our super soil are not thriving as much as the ones that are in the potted mix that I purchased and I think that I didn't add enough other material into that compost. I think it might have been just a little bit hot and it's compacting and they're just, I, I should have added more peat moss but I didn't get my mix right apparently. So I'm gonna check back on them in a couple of days. I mean obviously I'm not here every day but I wanna, I wanna look back and see how they're doing. If you have seedlings that are struggling with the soil that they're in for whatever reason, if it's too dense, that's really a big issue with seedlings or um, it's not the right nutrition. A lot of times you'll see plants struggle. And like in the case of these, if I repot these into maybe a little bit larger pots with a mix that will be what they need, maybe looser or more nutritious, whatever the issue is, more evenly mixed, they will probably at that point take off. Now I have a plant cell coming up in less than two weeks. So I need these to take off so that they can be a respectable size whenever it comes down to the plant sale. So I'll probably be doing some transplanting later on this week if I don't see a pretty marked change in them. For instance, here are some of the plants that are in the healthier mix. And then some of the ones in the other mix, you can see they're just really quite a lot smaller. You know, a lot of gardening is just trial and error. It's uh, trying things and if you notice an issue then troubleshooting, uh, trying to mix things up, mix the conditions up. Obviously uh, in the case of these plants, they're in the exact same condition. Some of them were separated a little later. So I have to take that into consideration and give some, some room for that. However, there's just such a big difference with all the other exact same conditions between some of the plants and some of the others. And whenever I look at the ones that are struggling, they're all in this kind of semi-compacted soil that I honestly just didn't mix right. Used that super soil and uh, I didn't get the mix right. So is what it is. Uh, it's just going to mean a little bit of extra work for me. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to complain about an extra day in the greenhouse. So I'm wondering if you guys are getting just completely sick of me showing you this variegated tomato plant because I'm so obsessed with it. I actually moved it down a level just so I could see it more. I think it is so pretty. It's starting to get dark out here. I wanted to give a little update on these bags. Of course, we've only been using these for this week. But I noticed today that some of the roots are starting to grow through the bag, uh, seemingly with no issue. Those are just some small ones. Now these are some of the marigolds that I first transplanted. They're doing really well in these so far. Now obviously I'm still just starting to use these. A lot of you guys messaged me asking me what I thought about those, but I just started using them for the first time. I did put the link in our Amazon storefront because up until this point, I can tell you that they're worth the money. It's like six or seven dollars for 200 bags. Um, and the, the link that I put in there, some of them are small, which are the ones that I'm using here for flowers. As you can see, I think they're like two by three inches ish. But it also comes with some larger ones that are a little wider. Here's one of those full. Um, and I, I think these would even work for things like peppers. And I'm actually going to go ahead and start my cucumbers and melons early in these. I usually just direct sow those things. I'm still going to direct sow my squash because they grow so fast. I, I don't know that I really need to start them. I guess I could. The reason why you typically don't start squash is because it doesn't like its roots being disturbed. But with these, you could just plant the entire bag not disturbing the roots and getting a head start on those things. I think that they're worth the money. These little tiny marigold roots are seeming to have no issue whatsoever beginning to grow through the walls of these. So I think that they are a biodegradable, more eco-friendly option as well as something that's just cheap. $7 for 200 pots. Uh, nope, not, not that. Get a chair. Hey baby, Ben. What? Get one of those chairs at the end of the table by the by the uh, computer. Can I, can I do a job? Put a 
pinch of that salt in. Well done, thank you. I'm gonna press it. This would be easier if my, uh, my food processor on this one broken. <laughs> it's split in so many ways you actually have to hold it down. <laughs> Okay. Still does the job. Yeah. Right here, we don't replace it unless it's actually broke beyond functioning. <laughs> I used to roll dumplings out, and that was good, but it's time consuming and a mess, and so now I just kind of pinch them off and put little pinched pieces in here, and it also works. You gotta do it. Make sure you press them flat, okay? Because my hands are washed. Yeah, that's great. Don't burn yourself. Ooh, you gotta make them bigger. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Well, we move the peppers in today. Maya moved the grow shelf into the other room, the seed room which is about to stop being the seed room. I'm going to be packing a lot of this up because we have a lot of guests coming in for the shindig, a full house, and so we're having to utilize all of our extra space. And so this is actually going to have a big air mattress in it to let someone sleep in here. But as for right now, the grow shelf is in here and uh, Amanda and I moved the peppers down here today. I think this is going to give them a little bit of a better shot in getting a strong start. I really want the peppers to do well. We have some cool nights coming up and the greenhouse will stay warm enough and I think it will die, but I just think that these peppers are gonna do a little bit better down here. And also, the greenhouse is really full. Uh, we were having to maneuver over all kinds of trays on the floor and so this gives us a little more time. The window greenhouse will be ready to move into this week. Um, and these peppers probably go out there whenever they're when they're a little bigger. You can see some of them are just starting to get their first true leaves popping through, but for the most part, they're not even really very developed yet. <laughs> okay. Oops, I'm just to throw those in. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> we are getting up really early and driving to Missouri. We're gonna go up to Baker Creek tomorrow. This is the first time Amanda's ever been to this area of the United States. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's the first time I've even been anywhere remotely related to the Midwest. So we actually met at Baker Creek's Seed Expo. We met through YouTube and then and met in person there and talked. Whenever I found out she was coming, I was like, you know what? We should take a trip to Mansfield. So I literally made me cry when she told me <laughs> we were gonna go. <laughs> So um, I messaged my friends at Baker Creek and was like, hey, I'd really like to come up and visit and uh, take my friend around to tour the grounds. I'd like to take a look at everything. I'm curious to see what it looks like there and I know their greenhouses are probably bursting and they are gearing up for garden season just like me. So we're gonna drive up there tomorrow and I am definitely taking you guys with me uh, with the vlog. So you'll be seeing that later this week. It's a really cool place. I'm looking forward to the spring planting festival in may which i will be speaking there but we're gonna go up there a little earlier kind of see what they're doing to get ready for spring this room is slam packed full of seeds and mail that we received from our viewers and now plant starts it's it's kind of my happy place right now it's also kind of a big mess i'm going to get it organized jeremiah's got to store some tools down here and i think <laughs> that whenever Natalie from Hey It's a Good Life comes to stay with me next week, I'm probably gonna put her up in this room. Of course, of course we'll turn the grow lights off so that she can sleep. We might have them moved out of here by then, but uh, I think that she will probably feel comfortable sleeping in a room with a bunch of seats. <laughs> might not be uh, five-star accommodations, but I think for a passionate gardener, sharing the room with the seeds uh, probably doesn't sound half bad. I'm feeling pretty good about the peppers. Having them down here makes me feel better. I think it's gonna be better. I need them to grow fast. Not because of going in my garden, like they can wait, they can take a little extra time, but if I'm gonna have any peppers for sale at any of the plant sales, they're gonna have to get the move on and, and start growing some leaves. Hopefully this will help. I think it will. <laughs> 
truth be told, I'm really just doing um, experiments I shared with you guys earlier that I kind of goofed on the soil mixture and it slowed things down. Failure happens. Um, it's all a learning experience. I think the more I garden, the less I realize that I know. But it's a process and it's a journey and it's a classroom. And so for those of you who have been gardening for 50 years and those who are embarking on your very first year of gardening, it's, it's just a process. It's a learning experience and you just keep growing. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I look forward to sharing more with you this week of our adventures and more of what's going on on the farm. Uh, I bless you guys. Until next time.